Welcome to our virtual design day presentation. We are team 19100 with team members Manair, Jonathan, Eric, Zach, and Chris. The sponsor for this project is ASML, the world photolithography systems leader. Our team's mentor is Dave Gilblom. We were tasked with conducting an investigation on the birefringence levels inside the level sensor lens window in ASML's photolithography system. They desired a quantitative comparison of the stress levels in the window optic for various manufacturing processes with a fully vetted proposal targeted at reducing them. The lens window optic is an optical contact assembly inside the level sensor system, which plays a crucial role for the wafer height measurement at the nanometer scale. The current birefringent levels in the window are a major contributor to the sensor error, and significant amounts of it are due to three major manufacturing areas the lens fabrication, the lens contacting, and the mechanical housing. These are the areas of focus that we have done our investigation on. Our original methodology for the project relied on using polarimetry data provided to us by ASML to weigh these three categories in terms of stress induced on the lens. We then reviewed ASML's manufacturing process and conducted literary research to design three solution configurations targeted at reducing the stress by refranges. These configurations were aimed at making one or two specific changes to the manufacturing process while keeping all other process details the same in order to allow for a way to track their effectiveness. We then were going to fabricate and test these configurations using resources from the College of Optical Sciences and supplies provided to us by ASML. We would also fabricate a, a reference sample to, that followed ASML's original process as closely as possible. This would allow us to keep our results and comparisons consistent and minimize any errors stemming from differences in our fabricate capabilities compared with ASML. In order to accomplish this, we needed to obtain the necessary materials. This included glass blanks of the appropriate material and dimension, as well as fabrication supplies such as wax, pitch, grinding and polishing pads, and an optical adhesive. The large optics fabrication and testing group at Optical Sciences agreed to work with us to find lab time and space with the appropriate machinery so that we could accomplish our task, as well as to train us on the fabrication methods. We would work with the polarization laboratory at Optical Sciences to test our samples with a polarimeter after each of the main fabrication steps to generate birefringence maps of our samples. This included one test on the original window blank, one test after grinding and polishing the blank to the specified thickness, and a final test after contacting the polished lens to the substrate. We would then use a data analysis software such as MATLAB to process them and calculate mean birefringence levels for each of the samples at each step in order to compare them with each other and the reference sample. We would then be able to track down which changes to ASML's fabrication process were the most or least effective at minimizing birefringence, format our most effective design solution into a vetted proposal, and document it all into our deliverable report. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 situation, our project was stopped short of following through with our fabrication and testing plans because the facilities we needed to use were shut down. This occurred approximately one week before we were set to begin fabrication. In order to compensate for these circumstances, we decided to continue our research as was done previously to develop two additional solution configurations. Our solution configurations were largely motivated by the test data ASML provided us, which showed the mean levels of birefringence added to the window lens for each stage of their manufacturing process. It showed that the majority of the birefringence was being added during the fabrication and contacting categories, with the housing category adding negligible amounts. Because of this, we decided not to use this category and focused entirely on fabrication and contacting. Our final results included two fabrication configurations and three contacting configurations. Upon researching optical fabrication techniques and stress contributors, we found that the grinding and polishing process has the effect of leaving residual cracks known as subsurface damage within the glass, leading to birefringence. Typically, these cracks can be up to three times the grit size, so each successive abrasive stage should grind off at least three times the previous grit size from the material. This implies that more material to grind off leads to a higher probability of remnant subsurface damage, and larger grit sizes lead to larger remnant subsurface damage. Our first two solution configurations target each of these in order to minimize them. Our first configuration will make a fabrication change of starting with a window blank that is 5mm thick instead of the original 10mm thick. Our second configuration is another fabrication change that will modify the abrasive sizes and stages used during the grinding and polishing process. With the proposed grit stages of 40, 25, 12, and 5 microns, these are altered from ASMLs to be slightly smaller in size and include an extra stage of polishing.
Motivation for the three contacting configurations came from research into the effect of different bond types that have stress concentrations in various optics. ASML's current contacting method relies on a full surface optical contact, which works by using the molecular van der Waals forces to bond the two glass surfaces when the surface roughness is low enough. However, overall RMS shape error in the window lens or substrate can induce stress for this type of bonding due to the window lens being considerably thinner than the substrate. The thinner glass material will be forced to conform to the shape of the substrate in this process, inducing pockets of stress in the material. Our three contacting solution configurations are designed to minimize this effect, but also provide data to help understand it better, provided they can be fabricated and tested. Our third solution configuration is contacting orientated, and involves a change from a full surface optical contact to a three-point adhesive contact. The change to a three-point contact allows for the overall RMS error of either glass component to have less of an effect on the bonding process due to the bond occurring over a smaller local scale, while the adhesive variation allows for this error to be absorb further due to its elastic nature and thickness variability. It will use circular wells in the substrate material for depositing the adhesive, allowing for circular symmetric stress concentrations on the window over the contact points. These contact points are positioned such that one is above the clear aperture and one on each side, all centered and identical. Two concentric rings around each well will be etched into the substrate to help control the bond area by catching spillover adhesive. The circular bond area was maximized according to the space between the clear aperture and the edge of the substrate, with the depth of the wells and etches set to be five times the desired bond thickness. The bond line will be very thin at 15 microns, except by mixing glass beads into the adhesive mixture. The adhesive chosen is a UV gearing optical adhesive known as Dimax OP61, which we chose due to its properties of having extremely low shrinking upon curing. Our fourth solution configuration is a variation of the third solution configuration. The purpose of it is to understand the effect of the bond thickness on the stress induced to the window. All aspects of the third solution configuration will be replicated here except for the fact that the bond thickness will be increased from 15 microns to 30 microns. Our fifth solution configuration is also a variation of third solution configuration. The purpose of it is to understand the effect of changing from a full surface optical bond to a three point optical bond. It is similar to the third solution configuration in that the placement and size of each circular bond area is the same. However, instead of wells cut inside the substrate for adhesive, they are extruded cylinders of glass, polished flat to the same smoothness quality necessary. We propose that these extrusions should be at least half a millimeter thick for easier fabrication, but the fabrication details needed to accomplish this were not derived in time for the end of the project. However, the concept was still developed for the sake of being a viable option to explore in the future. Despite our project not going as we had originally planned, we were still able to research and propose solution configurations targeted at minimizing the window lens by refringence. Because our project deliverable was to provide a report summarizing all of our research, we believe we met this requirement by providing a sufficient basis for ASML or a future senior design team to pick up where we left off by fabricating and testing the designs that we had originally planned to do. The team was very fortunate to have the support of ASML and the University of Arizona Optical Sciences Department. We would like to give a special thanks to our mentors, Lee Rong Wang and Jim Chester and Professor Daewook Kim.